Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. As I said, I'm Gora Kalnim, co-founder and CEO of Anaida Technologies. We're a spin-off of the EPFL in Lausanne, based in Switzerland. What we're developing is new technological solutions to enable higher success rates for those couples that are struggling with in vitro fertilization. To make it simple, we help people to make babies. But not in the way you might think of, because more and more that way is not working out for people. At least one in 10 couples worldwide are struggling now with, uh, with infertility. For most of them, the only concretely viable solution is to go through uh, in vitro fertilization. And that's when the, the fun stops. Because it's still quite an expensive process and the success rates remain frustratingly low, which lead to people having to do it more and more times, which compounds, of course, the cost and the, and the stress. So what are the problems there? Um, one of the key bottlenecks in the process comes when, you, when the doctor has to select which embryo to prioritize for transfer. Because while well, back in the day, uh, you would typically have maybe two to 10 embryos at your disposal, they would just transfer all of them. But fortunately, it was realized that multiple pregnancies had their own issues. So the standard became one by one, but which one? And we're dealing with embryos, so they're small and delicate. So this has very much limited the tools at the disposal of the doctors, and the technologies available to, to help in this decision. So the standards became uh, say limited. The main one is uh, to do a morphological analysis, which consists in looking at the embryos and uh, evaluating uh, visually in a qualitative manner, which has the best chances. And if you get more quantitative, more and more seeing the use of genetic testing, but this requires an invasive biopsy where you chop off uh, a piece of the embryo. It has to be done in an off-site lab, so it adds time and, of course, cost. That's where we're entering. We're developing um, proprietary technology that allows you to access quantitative information on the on crucial metabolic quantities inside the embryos, all accessible in a non-invasive way. So we're using uh, tried and true technology behind MRI with decades of medical life-saving applications. And what we've been able to do was to shrink down this capability and make it accessible for the first time at the tiny scale of single embryos. So the device, which we'll offer as a consumable, will simply require the doctor to place multiple embryos in it, connect it to a machine for analysis, and it will output um, a ranking guiding and uh, supporting the decision of the doctor. This will lead, in turn, to the, let's say, the main goal uh, for the couples in this process, which is as short as a pro of a process as possible with the fewest number of attempts. We mentioned offering a consumable, and this is a key part of the business model, which we call the Nespresso for Fertility. It's the machine and consumable model. Um, we would offer uh, the machine along with consumables to clinics, which can offer, um, as they already do, they offer screening services and treatment options uh, for their patients. Based on these premises, uh, we've already started collaborations with the largest center in Switzerland, where we're based, but also leading international um, fertility, now they're called franchises. One of them headquartered uh, here in Barcelona is Eugene. They, they're home to over 70 clinics worldwide. And just this morning, we started another collaboration with a leading center, the University Hospital um, uh, here again in Barcelona. A few words on the market. Uh, you may have heard that fertility is a growing issue, therefore also a growing market, but to put some number there, Focusing specifically on, uh, on fertility treatment, there's over one million cycles done in Europe uh, every year, and it's still the largest, most valuable segment. But the other continents are, uh, are catching up. Just, I learned just, um, just here in Spain, right now, 10% of babies are born uh, from IVF, and it's not showing any sign of slowing down. And globally, there's over 3,000 clinics, which is still not enough for the demand that's coming, so it's bound to, to be an expansion. Our goal in the first few years on the market is to, by 2030, to reach 125,000 cycles served, which sounds like a big number, but if you put it into context, just a group like Eugene does over 35,000 cycles, over 8,000 just here in the Barcelona Center. So numbers add up quite quickly. What do they want? What have they asked us for uh, since the beginning? Uh, two main things, 
to show that it's a safe technique because we're dealing with embryos, you cannot take any shortcuts, and uh, sensi sensitivity to important uh, information, biomarkers from the embryos. So we spent a lot of effort and uh, resources on really de-risking the safety aspects, talked about magnetic resonance technology, so the first uh, foremost concern was what do magnets do to embryos. There's a history of uh, data on MRI also used during pregnancy, but then we were told, okay, that's still a lot of cells, an embryo is just a few, what's going to happen? So we simply uh, we went there and checked. So we ran, um, borrowing from uh, Ripper Talks uh, examples, we ran multi-generational studies, also including standard IVF methodologies used to, um, to validate new materials, new procedures, new everything. And uh, we found uh, absolutely no adverse effect uh, in the development and the viability of the embryos uh, all the way down to the third generation. And of course, we've chosen materials that are uh, of medical grade and already used in other medical devices. On the data side, uh, since the beginning, uh, we started building a, let's say, a library of uh, data to supporting the importance of the markers we're detecting. We started um, not with embryos, but with the microtissues, organoids, because here we could have very good control on the conditions and define the experimental parameters. So we started with the disease models of steatosis, and in a published work, uh, we could show very nicely how we could track on an individual microtissue level the evolution of disease. And this also taught us what kind of uh, markers we were analyzing based on, um, on decades of literature on MRI for, for livers. So when we moved on to embryos, we were uh, well equipped to interpret what we were looking at, and uh, surprisingly found similar, um, similar signals. And we could, for example, in a cow uh, model, correlate them to different stages in development. In a pig model, uh, correlate to the ability to survive cryopreservation, which is a common um, technique used also in human IVF. And more recently, to get things uh, more interesting, we also did the first predictive study where we could show a link uh, between um, our markers and the ability to, for embryos to, uh, to evolve uh, in vitro. So where we are, uh, we started in the beginning from prizes and grants, of which uh, we were uh, very fortunate to get quite a few. But then in 2020, we uh, did the first seed round um, uh, with, uh, with a variety of investors in Switzerland, from business angels, institutions, as well as uh, early stage medtech VCs. 2021, uh, we won uh, Horizon 2020 grant, the Accelerator, which gave us another 1.6 million. And um, more recently, we did a round of convertible notes, um, which showed, again, the support of our current shareholders, and we even brought uh, a couple new ones along for the ride. So we're still raising. The final target is um, around 4 million, and this is to reach the first in human clinical phase, finalize the, the device, the predictive algorithm, so that we can hand things over to the clinics to test in the real setting. Just a few words on the team to conclude. Um, we have all the expertise to, to bring this uh, forward to success. And what the team may lack in, uh, in gray hairs and uh, decades of experience, we've uh, compensated on a very strong advisory board, which includes a Nobel Prize in the core technology, magnetic resonance, key opinion leaders from the field of fertility, both here in Europe, also in the US at Stanford, and experts from the world of business and the particular technology that we're using. And with this, I'd like to thank you very much. And uh, if you want to know more, uh, I'm happy to chat it over, chat about it with a drink later. Thank you very much.